Welcome to the series on Momentum Grade 12s. Today we will start by looking at what impulse is and then we will focus on calculations. What is impulse and how do we define it? To help us answer this question, let's look at what happens when a gun is fired. Do you notice the smoke coming from the gun? This is because there is an explosion inside the gun which propels the projectile out of the gun. This explosion is an external force on the projectile which acts over a specific time period. This force acting over this specific time is known as impulse. Impulse is given by the equation force applied times change in time equals the change in momentum, which is also equal to mass times change in velocity. This equation gives us a definition for impulse. Impulse is defined as the change in momentum of an object. The impulse experienced by the projectile and the gun must be equal in magnitude. Can you explain why? According to Newton's third law, if the gun exerts a force on the projectile, then the projectile must exert a force of equal magnitude but in the opposite direction on the gun. Also, the gun and the projectile are in contact with each other for the same amount of time while the force acts on both of them. Consider the equation again. If the force acting on the gun and the projectile is the same size and it acts for the same period of time, then the impulse experienced by both must be the same. However, impulse is a vector, therefore it has direction as well as magnitude. Although impulse is equal to change in momentum, it isn't measured in kilogram meters per second like momentum. Instead, impulse is measured in Newton seconds. So now we have seen that the net force times change in time is equal to change in momentum. This relationship is referred to as the impulse momentum theorem. We usually use the term impulse to refer to a large force that acts for a very short time period such as the explosion when a gun is fired. Now let's use the impulse momentum theorem for a variety of situations that involve the motion of an object. Let's look again at an example of a tank that fires a projectile. We have calculated the change in momentum of the projectile. If the projectile experiences the force of the explosion for two and a half seconds, what is the force that pushes the projectile forward. Earlier, we calculated that the projectile's change in momentum was equal to 54,337,5 kilogram meters per second. But impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So force times change in time is equal to 54,337,5. The explosion takes two and a half seconds. So we can now substitute this into what we know. Therefore, force times 2,5 is equal to 54,337,5. We divide by 2,5 on both sides to solve for the force. Therefore, the force experienced by the projectile is 21,735 newtons in the forward direction. Thank you for that example. Now for another. A tennis ball of mass 60 grams strikes a wall perpendicularly at 40 meters per second and bounces back. The magnitude of its change in momentum is 4.2 kilogram meters per second. A. What is the magnitude of the impulse exerted by the wall on the ball? Here is the information we have. We need to find the magnitude of the impulse exerted by the wall on the ball. Remember, impulse equals change in momentum, and change in momentum is given as 4,2 kilogram meters per second. Therefore, impulse equals 4,2 kilogram meters per second. B. The wall and the ball are in contact for approximately 0 0,05 seconds. What is the magnitude of the average force exerted on the ball? Remember, direction towards the wall is positive and away from the wall is negative. The formula states that the resultant force times change in time equals the change in momentum. Time equals 0 0,05 seconds and change in momentum is 4,2 kilograms meter per second. 
So resultant force times 0, 0,05 seconds equals 4,2. If we manipulate the formula, we see resultant force equals 4,2 divided by 0, 0,05, which means resultant force equals 84 newtons towards the wall. We can apply the concept of impulse to safety considerations in everyday life. For example, airbags and seatbelts. The purpose of an airbag is to help the passenger in the car reduce their speed in a collision without getting injured. When a car stops abruptly, if a person is not secured in the car, they move in the same forward direction with the same previous speed as the car until a force acts on them. In some situations, the passenger hits into the dashboard or windshield. This force acts for a very short time, so the force is large and the passenger is injured. An airbag provides a force over a long time. So even though the change in momentum is the same, when the force that slows down the passenger acts over a longer time, there is less injury because the force is less. Good reason to have a car with airbags. This brings us to the end of our lesson on conservation of momentum and collisions, grade 12s. You'll find more information about momentum at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Remember to do the questions in the task video. Goodbye.